prime time. I'm Paul Orford. Today I'm with Helen from TO Mark. Is it TO? Is that how I pronounce it? Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was not sure if it's TIO or TO. And today, look, she's one of the leaders in marketing, not only in Forex, but in other areas as well. So it's really good to pick her brains about herself, how she got into it, and the role or the way that you kind of branded TO. Because it's been a bit different, I like to think. So how did you get into this industry? Oh, how I got into FX. Actually, <coughs> I started working with INFX mm. in its heyday a few years ago, and that was my introduction, baptism of fire, really, into one of the, at the time, biggest, most bustling FX environments. And that um, taught me a fair amount about FX, I'd yeah. say, but entirely different from the marketing that we're doing today, because it just changes so much. So yeah, I got in about four-ish years ago yeah. and every week, every month, entirely new learnings, entirely new approach, entirely new understanding of how the industry works and what's going on, uh, but never a dull day. <laughs> so from yeah. INFX to what you're doing now, yeah. you've taken a massively different approach because that was quite formulaic where it's like bonuses, da 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 da, where oh, yeah. you're kind of in a box of what you do as opposed yeah. to now where you use influencers and so on and so forth. Why did you change that? Yeah, so <coughs> wow, that was such a long time ago now. Um, it also feels like a different world. Mm. I can't believe it was the same industry even. Um, so between then and now, obviously a lot happened in terms of where I worked, what I learned, but also how the industry evolved. Obviously now with the regulators clamping down and all of that stuff. And also it's just kind of um, without wanting to it's, it's quite, you know, there are a lot of sensitivities yeah, around yeah, FX. Yeah. And if I just come straight out and say, it, yeah. you know, this kind of really cheap, mm. um, almost trashy, mm. uh, win now, make money, um, bonuses here, that kind of is not the kind of client yeah. that you might necessarily want to attract. Mm -hmm. So yeah, whole 360 uh, change on that approach with TO Markets, much more, um, we try at least mm -hmm. to be as real as possible, as informative as possible, you're gonna lose, potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, statistically, um, if you look at it, 80% of people are looking at people's banners say that they'll lose, so yeah, real. Yeah, right. And that's not only because the regulator is saying you have to say it, but it's mm. because people have made that money. They've mm. probably worked hard for that money. It's important that they know that it's dangerous. Um, and as an employee of this industry, <clears throat> you kind of want to make sure that that is conveyed. Now, I'm not saying we go straight out there and we say, be careful. No, we say, you know, this is the financial markets. There's good, there's bad. It's interesting. There's learning to be done. Um, but we try to not mislead. And we try to, that kind of as a marketer is quite challenging then, because you're like, how can you attract people to what is potentially uh, dangerous and has the potential to be very boring as well. So that's where we try and come out with interesting themes, interesting yeah. concepts, and something just a little bit unusual. Well, look, I just had a thought. I mean, really, and I'm probably going to get shot down for this, so you can disagree with me. Advertising FX is kind of like advertising smoking, there's, there's no upside. You know what I mean? It's like, like advertising cigarettes. Oh, I mean, so funny. You know what I mean? If you just thought about it, like, yeah. they, yeah. We all make money from it. We yeah. all know that. But um, yeah. this isn't going to feed your family. It's like a yeah. cigarette isn't full of vitamin C. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, so you have to be quite creative. This is what I liked about when you started using influencers, because everybody in Forex uses the same ABC approach, you know? Yeah. So it's good that That's you change that. that. Like, yeah. what was behind that then? What was your motive? So I remember um, sitting in offices at times mm -hmm. before TM markets before FX Primus, and people would just spend their time watching what other forex brokers are doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, this person's yeah, doing that, yeah, we should do yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, how is that person doing that? Let's do it like that. Um, so I was like, well, you know, if you want fresh blood, that's mm -hmm. not the way to do it. 
Um, and you just want some interest. You work here every day. You want people to be excited about your brand. How can they be excited about your brand if you're not? Yeah. If you're just copying others, whatever. So, yeah, the influencers was a really hilarious mm. um, and unexpected turn in my career. We got on. We onboarded some really big names like um, Grant Cardone, yeah, Snoop yeah. Dogg was yeah. one of the big ones that people remember. Is that hard to do then? Do you just go to their agent or something like that and say, look, say this line is 50 grand or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't hard to do yeah. because they're, if they um, trust, let's mm. say, your brand, then mm. they'll do it for mm. a fee, of course. If we had a really dodgy brand, they wouldn't have done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, they did and just short videos it doesn't need to be long and it doesn't need to be going into the depth of how you operate and how you sign up and what the risks are or what this that the other just kind of tier markets is launching it was our launch campaign at the time mm -hmm. and um we had snoop dogg just in his hotel room or wherever he was just saying hey this is really cool yeah and a bunch of other ABC list actors. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And um, whatever you'll say about influencers now, you're mm. probably aware in, in 2020, the projection for influencers is that it's just right. going to go a little bit, um, not downhill, but where last year you could have got a really big name on Instagram yeah, or a yeah. really big um, company or hashtag that mm -hmm. you could have accessed other people's audiences, it's going to go a slightly different way for 2020. Yeah. So, Is it hard to pick one then? Because like, you could get completely the wrong one. Like, let's say, for example, they've got quite an exotic private life or something. Like, you know what I mean? And it could be a disaster. Or like, you've got someone and they're not the sharpest person in the world and they're just reading out this line yeah. verbatim and it's fact. like oh. fact yeah. definitely there was a lot yeah. of that last year when mm. it was all about let's get influencers to help mm. promote our brand what you do find is that they need help because they don't understand you or your brand so you end up spoon feeding them and then they end up just reading a script yeah. and of course then that's not real at all mm. they don't actually believe in your service or product or think that you're the best they're just reading what you tell them so that is probably part of the reason why influencers is going to go down for 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you become, like, all right, fair enough, like people like that Grant, Cardone, and Snoop Dogg, etc. they're influencers, but how do you become an, I'm intrigued about this, how yeah. do you get like the blue tick next to your name, do you know? Oh uh, yeah, that's so interesting. So there's a lot of factors, it depends on the mm. platform obviously, but I would say if I just had to think of the top influencers mm. off the top of my head, you're looking at someone like Kim Kardashian, mm. let's say, who just, and this is something you told me just before mm. the interview, is just like maybe talking about themselves mm. or something that people identify with. And of course you have to be posting regularly mm. and shareable stuff. And I think when it comes to Forex specifically, you can't just be posting uh, the market did this today yeah. or we did that today. You have to share something of value to people. So when people see what you're posting, they're actually genuinely interested and yeah. perhaps going on to share it themselves and so on and so forth and then that's how you grow. Does anybody actually read market like who's <laughs> like a retail, if you're a retail client, I don't know anybody who said, you know what, I'm going to use your brand yeah. because you had such an awesome news yeah. site or whatever, you know, like, oh, I love the way you told me about a pip. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, uh, man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, my personal view, I don't think, mm. I don't think this is the way to engage people. I don't think a trader is about to place a trade and says, hang on, let me read that market commentary <laughs> today. Yeah. I think um, there is value in market commentary though. In, as a, from the marketing side, yeah. you've got this rich full of keywords mm. and then you've got Google, of course, who's scrolling all the time looking for new fresh content. So from that side, it's really good, it's valuable. But from the trader side, they they want uh, probably much more helpful tools than yeah. that. I think what the problem is, is that when people do this, they all want to be Bloomberg when they should just leave it to Bloomberg. You know, <laughs> make your own identity or your own narrative and you'll do all right. You know what I mean? Bloomberg would have been pretty yeah. successful at it. If you do your own thing, like, I'm not yeah. saying dress up as a clown or whatever, but yeah. do your own thing. Yeah. Because the reason for the influencer, I'm determined to become an influencer. I want this blue oh, tick. Yes, you should. You should. No, I'm you just should. greedy. Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I will, seriously, anybody out there, I'll recommend anything. I'm trying to do something with my local fruit and veg man or something. <laughs> I don't know. Try it. But, yeah. Try it. So if you see a bag of apples in the next video or something like that, you know I pulled a deal <laughs> off or something. And then I just start slowly eating them. And go, mm. <laughs> So...
I'll share that for you. All right, cool. So look, let's wrap it up there. We'll do another one in a moment. Um, yeah. Any questions? You can get Helen via LinkedIn, which is, this will be put up on. Um, it's always good to pick her brains. Madam, yeah. thank you very much. It's awesome to have you on. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. All right, cheers, everyone. See you. Bye.